In this video, I react to Let's Game It Out's I produce so much nuclear waste that the world is ruined forever. Why? Because I'm really into the Satisfactory series and uh, now I just want to finish it. And as usual, if you like the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. And the original video is in the description. So if you want to go check him out, I'm sure you've heard of him. He's a legend. Anyways, let's get into it. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. Oh my god, it's time for more Satisfactory. Oh, how I missed you, Factory, with no rules, limits, or logic. <laughs> gosh it's it's been what a couple weeks since i've seen this content and good lord i already forgot the mess he's made it's funny how like when a bunch of time passes your brain's like oh yeah it's not so bad it can't be that bad it's that bad satisfactory is a game about making efficient machines or in my case just find new and inventive ways to torture <laughs> the game first we built a factory that was actually kind of normal until i realized you could make it look like this and then i made it look like this oh gosh i forget half of this stuff and i realized the frame rate gets worse which excites me and then we tested those limits by building a tornado out of <laughs> conveyor belts and it's there it is in all of its glory the one thing that puts satisfactory on the map i am convinced of it that tornado puts satisfactory on the map it's actually kind of pretty just don't look directly at it unless you like slideshows and then i saw this empty valley and i thought you know what this could use a conveyor belt weave not to be outbeaten we went back over to belt nato here and turned it into a full-fledged cocoon that right there that is like the most perfect perfect no man's sky dome that you can see right there that is the perfect view after that we moved on to other interests like messing with these trucks here only to realize that if you throw them all in a pit like this they become sentient and try to escape and i thought we might be done and then those crazy developers just kept updating the game so i kept trying out their new stuff got it okay so as obviously he just said it right there so as big updates happen he creates a new satisfactory video. So based off of that, my guess is that he's working on a new satisfactory video right now. Because right, someone tell me in the comments, uh, the newest update just came out like very recently, right? Right? like this beautiful train station that you can even custom name. And boy, did I custom name it. That's when I realized we could send them through the earth and straight to hell. And then at the tail end of the last episode, we realized one last thing left to do, nuclear power. Oh, and also today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, but I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Oh, and before we head to our first destination, check this out. The game actually runs better now and this blows my mind. Yeah, so a lot of you said um, in the comments, and by the way, I read every single comment, the good and the bad, the ugly. I don't really care. I enjoy reading your stuff. So please keep commenting. So a lot of you said that the developers took his save file and used it to optimize the game even better. So I'm assuming when he says this, that it runs better, it's because I guess that lines up with the mess he caused. They, they fixed it based off of this stuff. I don't know. I'm assuming that the, the repairs have already happened. That's what I'm trying to say. And my God, the performance increases. Oh, do you see that? Normally when he looks at it, it's just a slideshow. Bop, 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 bop. Do you see how smooth that was? Look at it. Also, does this give you like the GTA 6 uh, trailer vibes right here? That coloring? You know what I mean? Who did it first? It's amazing. This thing doesn't destroy my computer oh my anymore. Like, it's I can so, run up. Oh, it's so cool. Look at that. It's so smooth now. They had to have fixed it by now. They just to had it. to. I can bask in its majesty. It is a brave new world. So what are <laughs> we going to do today? Play around with nuclear power, of course. We built this guy at the end of last episode. And our first step to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and shove it into this thing. Last episode, we used our little locator guide here to find uranium, which was a little ways away. But the bigger hurdle is this stuff will kill you if you get too close to it and that's why we brought this lovely thing a hazmat suit strap it on makes you look super cool now we're ready to so does the hazmat suit i i think they touched on this last time i know that filters have like a life to them as you use them like their life goes down do hazmat suits have the same thing or is it just kind of like indefinite you put it on and it works forever or do you have to keep remaking hazmat suits somebody somebody tell me again i've done no research on this game because i like talking to you in the comments you go face the elements you know what let's do it with style in our beautiful sexy car is that new no, I don't think this, I don't think this is new. I don't know. Now, I feel like I took a wrong turn somewhere, but I'm going to have faith that this is the right way. Good Lord, look at those shocks. Did you see it? When it left the ground, it looked like it leaped off of it like a bunny. Well, everything's green. I feel like that's sort of a good sign. I think we're going to the right place. Yep, we definitely are. I see little bits of ore here. Oh, hello, cat friends. These are supposed to be spiders in the game, but for everybody's benefit, I turned on the... <laughs> 
Okay, that is so thoughtful of him. So instead of spiders, it's just cats attacking him. That's nice. That's really that's really considerate. Unlike Grounded, where you have to turn them into blobby boys, you know, there's a setting in Grounded you can just like slide it and they just turn into like ovals, and that oddly makes them even more terrifying to run into. Arachnophobia mode, which turns them into these creepy cat heads, which I think we can all agree is a little worse than just spiders. Any oh, that's built into the game. So that is that the game setting? That's not a mod or anything like that. That's built into the game it just turns into a cat head anyway we'll just take care of him in short order no big deal oh you want some too do you let's get this nightmare over with okay where <laughs> was i putting down our beautiful mining drill that's what never has anything in a cave looked so majestic so right now this thing so have y'all ever played i'm sorry i keep stopping so much because i just love love talking about this have y'all ever played planet crafter like that green iridium stuff reminds me so much of planet crafter i know clearly that this this came first and maybe they Planet Crafter took it from them, but I don't know. It gives me a lot of Planet Crafter vibes. Like, it's this deep in this cave. You have to go looking for it. That kind of stuff. Thing doesn't have any power, which honestly is for the better, because if this thing is pulling out uranium while we have it set up, we're just going to be taking on lots of radiation. Oh, did I mention to find this? I had to go through a waterfall. It's true. I wandered around for like an hour before I figured out it's back here. Okay. Fine. That's like the most stereotypical video game thing ever. It's always, it's like putting on your shoes. You know, you wake up in the morning, you put on your clothes you put on your shoes and then you check behind the waterfall it's kind of like that it's just that ingrained into a gamer finally ran the conveyor belt all the way home we're gonna stage our uranium over here you now i have to know are there more things in this game hidden behind waterfalls so for example that power plant that we looked at earlier is there something behind that waterfall you may recognize this little place over here in a previous video this is where i had all of my trucks you know the ones that turned into ascension <laughs> species and then i had to put them down otherwise the game would never run again so we're gonna stage everything here because we can't just send the uranium over raw we gotta make two things first uranium cells and electromagnetic control rods uranium cells are the uranium itself as okay so uh is this a part i know that he typically does them he does these satisfactory videos by the update so is this all of this nuclear power is this part of the most recent update at the time that he's working on or is this just kind of like a like a task that he's just been wanting to do. As well as concrete. And the electromagnetic rods are staters and AI limiters. Easy enough. Let's make a couple assemblers. We'll just place one here. And also just kind of over there. We're also going to send our uranium into this guy over here. Which, by the way, we haven't connected the power to that thing yet. So let's do that now. Okay, here we go. So now that... Oh, gosh. Did you see how smooth that was? When he panned over to lay the power line... I mean, typically the camera, when you see the No Man's Sky dome, it's just like the game just dies. And you see how smooth it was? Ah, oh, feels good, man. Feels good. We've connected the power. All we have to do is wait for the drill to do its thing and bring the uranium to us. And there it is. For the record, it took about four minutes. And it still hurts to get in here, right? Oh boy, does it ever. It's kind oh of gosh. a shame. It's so pretty to... So basically, the game just automatically trains you. you know, okay, so obviously the game kind of teaches you early game, mid game, late game stuff that you kind of have to just do to move on through the game. Is this something that the game kind of teaches you? Like, as you get more power, like, you're just going to have to end up keeping your hazmat suit on. Is that a normal thing? Or is there a way to kind of like hide is there a way to move your nuclear power maybe underground or away from your main facility so you don't have to wear the hazmat suit all the time is that a thing does this game just naturally teach you okay welcome to the hazmat suit you always have to wear it now and at this point in the in the game, can you wear a hazmat suit and a jetpack at the same time now? The look at it. It's like a bunch of slimers just on a conveyor belt. So this guy over here is going to be for our uranium cells. The uranium we obviously have. And right in front of us at the center of our base is... Gosh, look at that mess. <laughs> My cluttered brain. I don't... There's no way I'd be able to make sense of any of this. Even as the person setting it up, I would walk through looking around be like, I'm lost. And I have no idea where I am. That's kind of what I, I feel right now. Even, I, you just got to think like he forgets where things go sometimes. He just has to. Some concrete. Okay, and there's the concrete. As I slowly died of radiation poisoning. Now this thing's doing the magic of making uranium cells. And for our control rods, got to grab them staters and AI limiters. All right, AI limiters for days. It's kind of weird that the, the belt is still moving while all the items are just kind of not moving, not going anywhere. Obviously, they have nowhere to go, but it's kind of like a weird feature that like, okay, the belt's trying to get it going. That's weird. Is that still a thing? And these are the staters. Thankfully, I have pretty much all of these materials being built somewhere in my base, and I just need to find them and route them over yeah, here. Is he, yeah, exactly. He, like, how does he know where things are still? 
You know, if there's these massive gaps in the in the video's time, if there if there's these massive gaps where he posts these satisfactory videos, I bet you he probably just has to wander around a little bit and just kind of remind himself, okay, here's this, here's that. That makes no sense. <laughs> Now that those two things are underway, we have to turn to our old friend, the manufacturer, which we're going to build down here for kind of no reason. And in this thing, we're going to build nuclear fuel rods, which is what can finally go inside the nuclear reactors. My favorite part about this, very radioactive. That's what I like to hear. First, we'll send these uranium cells down there. Okay, that's one down and two down. So that connects our two nuclear things. To finish off the trifecta, we just need to get ourselves some of these encased in- That just looks like to-go boxes. Like when you order food to your house, they just look Looks like a to-go box. Industrial beams, which I just happen to know where there's a lot of them. It's like all the stuff I built previously was all building up to this. Also known as, thank God my production is so imbalanced, I just have extra random crap everywhere. See if we can't work quickly here, I seem to be taking on a not insignificant amount of radiation poisoning. Oh, and gosh. there we go. And we'll just send these beauties. See how fast it was dying just by existing there? <laughs> right over there. And since I've already got my medical inhaler out, this calls for a celebration puff. <laughs> uh, now that I've taken on 10 generations worth of radiation sickness, I'm just gonna stare off into space for a bit and let my empire just grow. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape. Ah, yes, the beauty of being AFK. <laughs> this is something that Planet Crafter teaches you, at least early on. So when... Okay, this is the only way I can relate to this moment right here, is through Planet Crafter, which I love that game. Before they retooled when you could get to the next phase on your planet, you just ended up having to AFK. Like, for example, it would take two or three hours to get you from one phase to the next, but the only thing you can do other than expand your base was just kind of sit there and do nothing. And it's just a beautiful thing. That probably took him hours. Actually, someone do the math for me. I'm not going to do it. Someone do the math for me and tell me how long that took. Right there. This. How long did it take to get that? Ape now. So many beautiful fuel rods. Now comes the fun part, where I route fuel rods all over the map and wonder if I'm going to melt my face <laughs> off. Almost there. Ah, finally, after all. So that waterfall that this thing is sitting on, is there anything behind it? Somebody tell me. All that, the fuel rods are in the thingamajig. That waterfall. The machine looks to be working, and boy, is it a thing of beauty. Now the only thing left to do is hook it up to power. I thought that'd be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke is. My God, look at that jump. Oh Our my capacity gosh. for power was 4,400, and then we brought the power plant online, and now it's 6,900. Oh my that gosh. is quite the leap. So here's the other thing that happens with nuclear power. We get delicious, beautiful waste. <laughs> Extremely radioactive. And what are we going to do with that nuclear waste? Well, build a bunch of conveyor belts that zigzags <laughs> it through this waterfall, of course. And I'm using the slow conveyor belts because I want all that radiation goodness to get all in the water supply. That would be so such a cool feature if you run it through the water it just makes the water toxic that would be so cool i know that's probably impossible to work in the game but it's a cool feature i think and then once its slow journey is complete, all that tasty waste goes into this bin for future generations to worry about. <laughs> okay, first nuclear power plant done. And while I'm satisfied we could get that first one off the ground, I feel like there's so much more. Gosh, this game is just so pretty. I know that I say this every video, but look at this game. It's just so pretty. This alone makes me want to play this game. Or we could be doing. Huh, this gives me an idea. I can't help but think being able to look at the cocoon again is a blessing in disguise. So for the first time in a long time, we're going back in. It's been so long <laughs> since I was able to climb in this thing. Here we are in the belly of the beast. These, of course, being our three oil refineries. I'm tempted to go back and change all of these Mark 1 conveyor belts to Mark 5, but even I hurt imagining how long that would take. We're now here at the halfway point. You can tell because the iron rods stop and the oil begins, so I don't actually think there's an opening. I think I have to make one to get out. Nope, wait, found my opening. I'll just fly. <laughs> the very top. We're gonna work it in through the top, boys. I'm my way up there. Hopefully I don't run out out of fuel for my jetpack. It's a long way down. Ah, and here we are at the very top. I know I've said it a couple of times, but I cannot stress how bizarre it is to be able to look at this thing and the frame rate <laughs> maintains. Look at the dumpster that is my factory. Oh my gosh. So this is the first top-down view that you get of everything. Okay. I mean, look at this mess. How many repeats are there? So someone explain this mess to me in, in very top-down basic explanation. Okay, like, what are his zones? Like, is this... I don't know, man. Like, let's pretend. Is this his... I don't know. 
iron smelting zone. Does this, is this over here where he makes his power? You know, does does the chaos have some sense to it now that you're looking at it? Set up. God. Like at this point, even I can't tell what goes where. So I keep forgetting <laughs> that there's like stairs and walkways. And it would be really useful because we do need to find a way to get up there fast. But no one likes taking stairs. So I found a better way to get up there. It's called a bunch of bounce pads all over the place. Oh here, let me show you what I mean. Starts with this bounce pad right over here. So we just jump on this conveyor belt. He just, okay. This whole video is about him making a toxic waste how long is it gonna spend on the bounce pads <laughs> which will launch us in at the right angle. It'll take us over to this bad boy. Oh my and it'll gosh. it'll just start bouncing us all the way up to the top. And the nice thing is it's all set up so I don't oh have to do anything. Oh my gosh. And I can just bask and look at our factories. Really just enjoy the ride. Oh sh**. I'm not even moving anything. It's just bouncing me. Okay, so this right here. I don't even know anything about this game. And I can tell you that this bounce pad elevator thing took him hours to make. I still think there's no creative mode. So he had to spend one bounce pad at a time figuring out the trajectory, obviously, and just kind of figuring it out. So this, this bit took him hours for me. So I can just look around at the nice surroundings, really take in all the beautiful scenery. Are you f***ing serious? Or I can just hold on. F See, he's kind of hinting at it right now. Him, the whole like process of figuring it out. For dear life and hope the whole thing works. Honestly, it works about 10% of the time. <laughs> it's the best. But it gets you close to the top of the cocoon, so beggars can't be choosers. Oh, here we are coming in for a landing. Bounce off this backboard. Here comes the final bounce. I can't think of a better way to get to the top of this spiral. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what's the plan? I mean, if you... That is so impressive, him figuring that out. I wouldn't... See, even... Look at... Okay, zoom in. Look at all the power he had to run to all those individually. So he had to build his the whole thing up, do the power, and then tear stuff down. Unless you can just build in the sky like that, which I don't think you can. But anyways, back, back to the video. I'm getting sidetracked. You look out there, you can already see our nuclear power plant dumping nuclear waste down below. So here's what we're gonna do. I know this seems like sacrilege, but we're gonna cut the head off of the beast. And I know it seems scary, but I promise you there's a reason for everything. Remember how the top of this thing, because of the red tint, looked kind of like a warhead? Well, now we're really putting that nuclear touch on the top <laughs> oh, no. of it. Yeah, okay. That's looking better. Oh my gosh. Gaudy it barely fits. <laughs> Vegas quality to it. Also, why is my nuclear reactor already showing signs of wear and tear? I haven't even hooked it up yet. And of course, we want it to look classy, right? Like, look at all the crap already floating. Oh my gosh. Look at that view. That is so intimidating to see. Around this thing. That majestic crown up there deserves the finest curb appeal. So first, let's make sure to loop this stuff through <laughs> everything so that everything is nicely irradiated. Okay. Yeah, this'll do. He's making it so impossible just to be in his base. <laughs> B plus at best. So we're going to take these fuel rods and we're going to feed them in through the bottom of the cocoon. That way the entire thing can maintain its visual splendor. Okay, there we go. Everything is properly irradiated. Oh now all we need to do is connect it to the power grid. Thankfully, because of the bounce pads floating in the air over here, there's already a bunch of power lines just ready for me to connect to. God, look at that burst oh in power gosh. right there. Now we got to deal with my favorite thing, nuclear waste. The waste is all going to come out of right here and as is my custom we're only going to use the finest slowest belts we can so okay question with the nuclear waste in his waterfall one it was making power and it took him a while to kind of get to the nuclear waste so at some point does it stop making power until you deal with all the waste excess or can you just choose to not deal with it and what is the punishment if you don't deal with it now all we need to do is just run this belt full of byproduct goodness all the way down to the edge of these barrels and just to make it a tad more convenient. I'm going to send the oh nuclear gosh. waste down in one of these splitters using the power of conveyor lift technology. Thank God these things can just keep going lower and lower and lower. <laughs> Look at that. You can just have it hand. He just jumps off. That's okay. I'm sorry. And delivered right to the ground. You know what I think I'm going to do with all this nuclear stuff? I'm just going to add a merger to where these iron rods are coming out. And I'm just going to mix these in with the iron <laughs> rods. Oh, yeah. I'm sure this won't be a problem at all. That would be okay. I, I talked about this with like the radioactivity and the water. If it like gets in the waterfall, it makes the water radioactive. That would be such a cool feature if that nuclear waste, if it gets too close to other things, it makes other things radioactive because that happens naturally. That's why all these giant vaults exist to seal it off because if you spend too much time on it you become you become saturated with it that'd be a cool feature i don't know if they're gonna add it 
but it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, there it goes. Join your friends. You know, though, with two power plants, I still feel like we're not producing enough nuclear waste. Oh my gosh. Ah, much better. There's oh like 50- Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. Somebody, somebody with talent, tell me how long this took him. How, how many hours of AFK did he just have to do for this? <laughs> power plants back there. But this actually poses a new problem. While our power capacity is amazing, our consumption is, uh, conservative at best. And in order for these things to start chewing through those fuel rods, we actually have to get our power consumption up. Otherwise, they're just gonna sit here idly. Which is great if you're trying to build an efficient factory. It's not so great if you want your main- Oh, you can't even see the anything anymore. There's so much pollution. Look at that. It's completely blocking the No Man's Sky Dome. Look at that. Export to be nuclear waste. And God, do we want more of these barrels. And to do that, we're going to turn to our old friend, train technology. And the reason for that is because trains generate electricity and I can set them to go forever. So test one, one station here and another station here. Let's put a train down and do a quick test. As you can see, firing this thing up, it goes around and around and around, generating not nearly as much as I would like, but hey, it's generating something. Something else interesting we can do is we can connect trains together. And while each train in and of itself doesn't take up more power to function like this, they all have to fire up their engines to move. That's a nice little power push for not doing a whole lot. And oh, I see. So if you add multiple motors, it just keeps spiking the energy. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. He's really good at explaining things because I have no clue what's going on. But thanks to him, he explains things really well. I'll know this power output matters. If I see barrels piling up here, I know it's working. Now I'm interested to see if we can generate some power faster. Test number two, in which case we see if adding some rails that go up increases oh how much power it takes. And then also I gave it a little more distance, mostly because I don't. That just looks like a children's Disney park ride right there. Just like the nonchalant loop-de-loop. -loop. Children would love this ride. I don't know how to use train tracks very well. Let's play conductor and see how it goes. So as always, when you first start it out, it does take a lot of power. Downhill does a little bit less for the power. Once the train gets moving, it takes... <laughs> Do we see... Do we see the name of the train station? Help. <laughs> Just this... The subtle names. I love it. Except less because it's already got that speed going. So here's my current running theory. Maximum trains combined with maximum train stations means tons of stopping and starting, meaning tons of power generated. You know, I have an idea how we can test this, but I got to build something real fast. So hang on. It'll just take a second. A, a brisk, a brisk two hours. What's funny is I 100% believe this. Normally when in YouTube videos, you see this kind of stuff, you're like, nah, it's probably lying. But I 100% believe this. Okay, here's test number whatever oh this gosh. is. I sure hope it goes okay. It's essentially one gigantic loop that goes through all of these tracks. Oh my Not gosh. pretty or elegant. Hey, the whole point is just to... This is like, okay, you know when you're little and you come across like that table with all the fun train tracks and you can kind of like, it's all wood. You, you roll it across and you just love it. This is that, but in satisfactory. Generate electricity. Okay, now we've added the trains. In case you're curious, this is 180. Help, help. <laughs> you see the name for this one over here? Help 18. I love it. B8 trains all connected together, Help taking 21. up the entire track start <laughs> to finish. And it's all automated, so the trains will just loop through this disaster forever. There are 23 total stations they go through, aptly named Hulp, before loop. Oh. I pronounced it wrong. Being back around. <laughs> you know what pains me most about this? It's not that it's actually semi-orderly, although that also pains me. It's how freaking slow everything's going. <laughs> I didn't realize that would be the thing that drives me nuts. But enough talk. How's it doing for our power? At an idle state, about 6,000, not too bad. When the trains start up again, it hits a nice healthy 12,000. That's still Holy a far cow. cry from maxing out our potential with 100,000. But before I go nuts and start laying out more track, let's at least see if we're exporting any of the- Okay, so if you have had to obviously he's coming up with creative ways to waste energy now if you could do it person who knows the game how could you just waste an obscene amount of energy what's a more efficient way to doing this the good stuff now and by that of course i mean nuclear waste yeah yeah this will do this will do nicely <laughs> that's a lot of barrels i think this is working a lot out of quite barrels. well so normally the goal would be to try to figure out where to put this stuff so it doesn't do any harm but why would you want to hide something so majestic now me i look at my base and i see something that's missing and i think this has a chance to be a real showpiece once again i'll be back in a hot oh minute well gosh. that's looking just swell uh
Look at that chaos. It's everywhere. Does the radiation suit even protect you from that much radiation? Or is it just inevitable you're gonna die? Oh yeah, it feels good. This is looking great. So one might look at this and get the impression that I covered the entirety of oh my, my base in nuclear waste. And you'd be right. Up to and definitely including the- Oh! <laughs> How's he gonna do stuff now? <laughs> He's gonna work like 10 minutes, have to leave, and come back. He's gonna- Okay. He did it to himself, remember. Weave, which if I do say so myself, has oh my never gosh. looked better. It's kind of like this is a waste disposal site, except above ground and advertising its presence. Oh my god, the radiation is so <laughs> bad. If I die and I have to respawn in, I just die instantly. <laughs> I've made the base so hostile, I can't even be here anymore. And also, the spaghetti of my base is just completely out of control now. But damn, that nuclear waste <laughs> looks so vibrant in the moonlight. So I feel like this is how this base was oh gonna end gosh. up. Nuclear waste everywhere, power plants, as far as the eyes can see. Our conveyor NATO that turned into a conveyor cocoon now has a warhead aiming up to the heavens. And thank God I can use these bounce pads to just bask in it all <laughs> while I fly off. Oh, and thank my lucky stars, the frame rate's gotten kind of bad again. I'd like to thank NordVPN again for spawning. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. And let me know what else you want me to react to. You want me to keep reacting to Let's Game It Out? Do you have any other ideas? Let me know in the comments. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.